Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of videos and today I wanted to show you this utterly ridiculous game uh, that I found on leadchess.org and it was kind of, I guess, me just playing around with various things on the Lead Chess Opening Explorer and finding this particular trap in this particular gambit line that you'll probably never ever get in any of your games but it's still really really fun. So, um, this this line comes out of the Unglan Gambit and uh, well I guess I'm going to give it a name, I'm going to call it the Calypso Gambit and the reason why I want to call it this is I wanted to name it after a player called Dr. Philip Corbin. Now he was a chess player who promotes a style of chess called Calypso Chess. Now what is Calypso? Well Calypso is a highly rhythmic uh, style of uh, dancing that originated from Trinidad and Tobago. Now just like the music, his style of chess is swashbuggling, fast paced, aggressive and focuses at checkmate at all costs. So what I would say here, if that doesn't quite suit your style, then maybe the Calypso Gambit isn't for you. Now, another reason I've called it the Calypso Gambit is because he has actually played this online. I found some of his games on leechester.org where he has won quite a few games in this particular trap line. So let's take a look. So the game started with D4 and then E5, a very pugnacious move. Okay, black is just simply giving up a pawn. Let's just leave it at that. There's not really any good moves here. White has just got to take this pawn and just be happy that he's up materially. <laughs> I mean, who, who wouldn't be happy to be up a pawn so early on? So white, of course, captures. And there are some, you know, crazy lines you might have seen before with knight to c6 and queen to e7 and some, um, you know, crazy little trap lines here. But uh, instead, in this game, uh, black plays d6. So actually sacrificing a second pawn. And after d, d takes, uh, I do actually play... Um, bishop takes a d6 here in this line. I do quite like this line. Black just is down a pawn, but he's slightly ahead in development and gets some nice activity for his pieces. But instead, to get into our Calypso Gambit, uh, the theory of the Calypso Gambit is playing the move knight to c6. We don't care about our pawns. Pawns are not people. Who cares? So just like, I guess, I mean, this reminds me a little bit like a Danish Gambit. But black here is sacrificing his third pawn to speed ahead in development. Now, d takes on c7. Seems pretty good. Getting up another pawn here. Now, queen takes on c7. And there's loads of moves that are pretty good for white. I mean, you whack this on an engine, it says it's like plus 20 for white. So, you know, you can you can be my... You can do, do your homework and have a look at this position. But yeah, I mean, white should be fine. Uh, I think the best move out of all the moves is probably playing c3. And you'll see why this move is quite important because it stops this knight from potentially accessing these two squares, which are pretty much these sort of trappy squares in this particular line. But going back, um, I will say, I mean, even in the main lines, black does get some interesting ideas. You can see on the database, black weirdly has scored about the same as white. So, you know, clearly this is a not a bad bullet or blitz weapon. I've seen stuff where this H pawn goes flying down the board if white castles short side and then yeah delivers some very interesting uh, attacking uh, attacking options along that side. So let's have a look at this game though and what I wanted to show you is how white can go horribly wrong even though he's kind of developing pretty normally. So in this game uh, white just decides okay I'm going to develop my knight onto f3 Seems like a good idea. Get your knight pieces out to good squares. Get your knights before your bishops controlling the centre. What could be so bad about this? Well, here now, bishop comes to f4, f5. A very nice active place for this bishop. And maybe aiming at the c2 pawn. Spoiler alert. Let's see what happens. So again, I think here c3 is probably the best move. Just to stop any of those shenanigans. And it gives a little breathing room for the queen. But in this game, the other knight comes to c3, which I would say is slightly dubious at this point. Now, whilst it's not a bad move, um, you know, white is actually, I would say, simply developing without much thought. He's just gone, oh, okay, I'll get my pieces to OK squares and see what happens. But now it's going to get a very uncomfortable surprise here after uh, black's next move, which is rook to d8. Well, there's only really one square, only one move that works here. Knights, knights to d2, it looks a bit 
weird, we wouldn't really want to play that. So bishop to d2 seems like the most logical move here, but now, you know, this bishop is a little bit tied up in this line. And here, black initiates his attack now with knight to b4, putting a bit of pressure on the c2 pawn. Black, white's best option. Yeah, let's play the rook to c1. That seems like a good idea. But in this game, he plays the move e4, which is the best move, but there is a trap associated with this. So now after bishop takes on e4, this is where things get very, very spicy. So there is a winning move here for white, but he has to be careful which one of the winning moves he picks. I'm gonna give you a choice. You can either take this bishop with your knight or you put your bishop onto b5 with check. See which move you're gonna go for. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. <gasps> Oh, did you find the right move? The correct move was, in fact, bishop to b5. Hmm. We're going to see why in just a sec. But let's first have a look at why knight takes her on e4. Doesn't work. It looks so good. It looks so logical. You're recapturing the material that you were down. You're up four points of material. What could be so bad about this? Well, here, and this is where there's been 32 games, and black has won 97% of those games. There is one game where he lost, which I, I might... I'll kind of show you why white lost that particular, uh, that black lost that particular game. But here, now knight takes on c2. This is looking pretty terrible. The best move is actually taking with your queen. And actually, this isn't all that bad. We'll see why in just a sec. But just like 31 other players who played this particular position, they moved their king to e2, thinking everything is fine, hunky dory. Oops, checkmate on c4. Might surprise you, wouldn't you? You wouldn't think there'll be a checkmate here, but this is in fact checkmate. The knight controlling these squares, the queen's attacking here. What went so badly wrong for white? Well, let's first go back to this position here. In actual fact, queen takes on c2 is fine, and there's one game where white won <laughs> in this position. I guess the reason why is after queen takes on c2, here you can play the very nice move bishop to b5 check. I think this is a really powerful move and there's not really anything good here that black can do. I think the best move is just moving the king up to e e7. This is now blocking in your bishop and after this white can actually castle. I think actually white gets some decent compensation here. Uh, he's got all his pieces developed, the king is stuck in the centre, you know, white can think about maybe just getting his rooks to maybe these central files or playing maybe rook to c1 and doing all kinds of problems, giving all kinds of problems to black. There was a game from this position, I think it was, oh it was a rapid play game which is interesting, which went uh, rook here, after which there was castles, bishop to e7 and well white uh, had a very uh, commanding attack here after this capture. There was stuff like this, and yeah, it just looks like a crazy game, but white just had so much better activity here than black. But anyway, going back, that was maybe the first mistake. Well, I say the third, third mistake, but whatever. Um, now, going back to here, now I said, I gave you an option here of moving either one of these two pieces, and the best move here is actually bishop to b5, just for basically the same reasons that we just saw with the queen takes on c2 line. Uh, the reason why is, well, black's best option is actually just to retreat this bishop, and okay, he's gonna actually go down a pawn in this position, but it's actually kind of worse than that because white's gonna get safe very quickly, and actually black is still a few steps away from getting his king to safety. So he's just down a pawn, he hasn't really got anything in this position, and uh, yeah, that, that's about, that's all she kind of wrote in this position. So uh, another move that's been tried is king to e7, but again, this also doesn't really work either. Now there's no longer this problem because the king is out of the way. We no longer have this threat of capturing here on c2. If that happens, then yeah, rook to c, c, uh, rook to c1. And actually now this knight has to trade itself off after a move like this maybe. Uh, but you know, even here, like I was just looking at, there's there's one game in this position where actually rook came to e1, and that's just just really good. Uh, you know, there's no way that black is better off in this position. But anyway, so that is a fun little get little trap. I thought you might quite like it, uh, just to show you that again. So knight takes and then take on c2 and checkmate on c4. A very interesting game. Uh, thank you to Philip Corbin for. Um, 
playing these particular crazy variations and giving me inspiration to play this move. Take care, bye bye.